Hello and welcome to the FinTech Finance Virtual Arena. I'm your host, Doug McKenzie, and on today's session, we're going to be looking at the payments infrastructure over in the Nordics. And joining me, I have two guests right at the heart of today's topic. First up, I have Peter Larson from Volante Technologies. Peter, how are you doing here today? Uh, thank you. I'm all good here. We have uh, Orthrum coming in the Nordics, so it's exciting times. Absolutely amazing. And uh, well, uh, Peter, for our audience who might not be aware, could you tell us a bit about your, yourself, your role at Volante and also uh, Volante Technologies itself, please? All right. Yes, for sure. So my name is Peter Larsson. I'm based in Gothenburg on the west coast of Sweden. Uh, within Volante, I am the business development director. So I work very much hand in hand on the product side, but also very close to our uh, customers to tailor and embed how they can make the most out of payments. I'm also part of the subject SME side of it, where I'm part of a Nordic Payment Council, which is new in the Nordics. We are to streamline how we are building the rule books. And those rule books are mainly driven out of the European Payments Council, where I also have a seat to, to drive innovation in payments, specifically for the Nordics or, or confirmation of pay, me, uh, pay as such. As I, well, that is really going to change the way that, that a lot of businesses can operate in the Nordic Indeed, region. Yes. So I'm very excited to have your perspective here today. Thank you so much, Peter. And also joining us, we have Kasper Mortensen from Nordair. Kasper, how are you doing here today? I am doing absolutely fine. Thank <laughs> you very much. Uh, I'm not sitting too far away from, from Petter, also sitting here uh, near Copenhagen and, uh, and again, uh, Easter is coming, and I think we're all in a, in a great mood today. So all good from here. Thank you. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, just across the pond from each other. Well, with that in mind, then, um, as well, I guess, Casper, um, for, for audience who aren't aware of yourself, you, you take us through your role at Nordair 2, please. I will definitely try my best. Uh, <laughs> it's always the hardest everybody. thing to do. Uh, my... <laughs> it, it is. It is indeed. But let me let me try. Uh, my name is Casper Moltensen. Uh, I am from Nordea, as, uh, as recently highlighted. Um, I'm today sitting with the responsibility of our liquidity management and, uh, and corporate channels. Um, but before that, uh, I have been heavily involved in, in P27 in, in one of the Nordic competitive banks. I've been a part of the uh, advisory board uh, since the very beginning of the, the, the P27 journey. Uh, uh, I have had the more of a uh, execution uh, and commercial responsibility uh, implementing and overseeing uh, p27 uh, so i'm extremely happy that i can uh, be with you guys today i uh, try to to give a little uh, perspective to why are we at all uh, engaged in p27 and where can that uh, bring us uh, in the sector uh, going forward well, I'm very excited to hear it because it's innovations like that that I think are going to be at the heart of a, a lot of regions, uh, ways they look at payments going forward. And I think you guys are really uh, trailblazing in that regard. Now, before we kind of get into P27 and, and really look at some of the exciting uh, processes we're going to see out of that, could I come to you, Peter, and ask beyond the, just the adoption of, of card payments in the retail space, for instance, if you look towards the business side of things, the things that people might not know typically about the Nordic payment scene, what are some of the innovations that, that really come to mind? I think you, you mentioned one almost in, in your, your intro. Indeed. And, and innovation is uh, one of the pillars of P27 down the road. I think initially, um, if you compare the card segment and, and what's happening on, on with P27 supporting it, it's, it's mainly two things we have to address in the beginning. There are two, two different sides. But the, the one is to get ready, of course. Uh, we are on the early days of getting ready and then it is to build offerings on top of their, uh, the bank infrastructure <clears throat> and getting ready is to look into modernization and how to capture richer payments inf information and that also leads to the harmonization and more agile infrastructures that are flexible for new payment products okay um, out from that that that's where the innovation starts and we can quite soon see uh, more uh, coming out from the Swish side, our domestic immediate payment scheme. In Denmark, there is mobile pay as well. So uh, these immediate payments will, will be one driver for innovation where you can share bills or you can, uh, you, you can have 
uh, a lot of things attached to how to do the pay payments. Yeah. But also uh, in Sweden, for instance, we are aiming for the batch services. So, so that will be the core for performing batch services and, and move out from the existing bank year into P27. This will mainly be for invoicing, pensions and salaries, etc. These the, the account to account transfers needed for, for consumers, but also mainly for merchants and corporates as well. Yeah. So with that in mind, I think the innovation will be very strong. Um, I started off with confirmation on payee because that is something that is coming down the road. Uh, it will secure the payments that we make sure that before we actually making the payment, we can secure that the, the beneficiary or the, the receiving end uh, I, I represent the actual person or company. Yeah. So that will reduce the fraud cases, etc. That's amazing. Yeah, but looking even further, I think the bill payments, and I think Casper uh, can strengthen that uh, idea as well. The bill payments is massive. It's that's the game changer in the, in the industry. So um, it's going to be uh, exciting to see that. Yeah, well, I think the way you kick that off, uh, Peter, is absolutely incredible because it's such a mercurial region when it comes to payments innovation. There's there's almost a a, a real big thirst for accepting payment innovation, and it's exciting to see some of those. In- those moving forward. And I guess, Casper, I don't know if you, you, know, you have any inputs on, on where you see the future of, of payments as well in, in the Nordic region. No, no I think I can, I can only echo uh, Peter here. Um, I think there is many great opportunities uh, for commercialization, building new products, products that are sitting closer uh, to the users. I think actually for many, many years, we have not really been developing that many advanced uh, payment products. Uh, if we uh, keep aside the entire mobile pay switch uh, and the, the, the mobile uh, version, if we, if, if, we, if we take that out of the equation, then I think uh, there is there's a lot uh, that can be done different. Uh, but uh, let's, let's try and get back to to that also when we are talking a bit more a bit more about the fundamentals for for actually bringing p27 to life so so for now i completely echo there's yeah. a lot of opportunities uh, on top of the new infrastructure very exciting and yeah speaking of those fundamentals then caspar what were the objectives of p27 from the day? i think it, it, it's very important to state that there is many but one of the most important and critical ones are the fact that we have, uh, as Nordic banks, um, been sitting on a tremendously big legacy infrastructure uh, for, for many, many years. Uh, it, it has been legacies that has been built in, in, in Norway, Sweden, Denmark and Finland. And one of the core objectives uh, with P27 is indeed, of course, to modernize. Uh, That is a key word here, uh, to ensure that we can stay competitive, to ensure that we can build new components, uh, that we can uh, build on top of the product offerings, and that we can compete with uh, the ever changing competitive landscape, which is not only in company banks anymore, that is of course uh, also a competition from uh, fintechs and from from new businesses really, um, uh, bringing new business models to the market. But again, one step back, um, it is it, it is and has been extremely costly for the banks to run uh, and do maintenance on uh, on a number on a significant number of legacy infrastructures um, for a long long time uh, and in order for us as a Nordic bank to stay competitive uh, stay on top uh, uh, to ensure that we can uh, offer our customers the best solutions um, we need to modernize but also to take uh, costs down uh, cost to serve uh, is a, is a major uh, topic for us in the bank. So uh, so that is at least uh, some of the uh, objectives to create this uh, interoperability uh, that uh, that should ensure uh, that the infrastructures uh, should be able to to talk together, to communicate together, and also that should be able to bridge not only the 
the Nordic uh, area, but but actually the entire world uh, uh, is something. Uh, that needs to 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 happen, and 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 now we decided that P27 should also aim uh, to um, to secure that part also. So I think that is at least a couple of of uh, objectives with with P27. I'd like to chip in on uh, as well. I was Casper. I was an early fan of P27 when when I laid my eyes on P27 the first time. I fell in love with in a way because it's um, in the Nordics we are doing quite a lot of business in between our countries. We we uh, live in Malmö in Sweden and we work in Copenhagen or we, as being Swede, but Danish people also invest in properties in, in the Swedish side. And, and the same thing goes between Norway and Sweden as well. We have a lot of property owners in uh, Sweden who are Norwegians where, where we are commuting and, and sharing a lot of uh, investments, but also we, we need to do those um, transfers uh, cheap and simple enough. So we don't need to open extra bank accounts in, in the country we, we choose to live in. Uh, it should be very simple to, to maintain how, how to pay for, for everything. Yeah, and that's, with, that's true, Peter. And, uh... Yeah, and well, I mean, that's hopefully what we will have from, from this. We're having that, that increased communication, but obviously there, there has been that historic connectivity previous building on that is going to be very exciting. Um, we're seeing examples from around the world, similar examples, um, Peter. Um, so obviously, as you mentioned, you weren't, when, it, when you first read it, you weren't, you weren't a massive fan, but you know, do you think there's been some kind of lessons from the other parts of the world, the other regions, um, interconnected payments platforms that, that you think P27 has learned from and actually won you over? I think the business case uh, is not unique by P27, but it, because we have seen initiatives like UPI in India, uh, Paynet in Malaysia, etc., and then you have the large UK and you know, paid of UK in, in UK for short. Uh, but I, I get the opposite way. I get a lot of interest from international banks monitoring and viewing how we in the Nordics are, are going to succeed on this. Uh, it, it's a market for them, of course, but it's also something that builds the blueprint how to make the European payments more efficient as well. In the early days, we introduced the immediate payments. Uh, we had those in UK and in Sweden early, uh, very early, but for from a Nordic uh, European perspective, it's a tougher case because we are, we are fragmented uh, in, in many ways. And the blueprint of P27 could be the, the, um, you know, the success factor of how to incorporate that into the wider Europe. Yeah. Now, one, think, I definitely agree, and I and I think um, all of the Nordic owner banks behind P27 is, of course, uh, very aware that one thing is that we make life easier for ourselves as banks and and, and providers of products to our 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 customers and, and consumers. But of course, we are also very aware that bringing more interoperability. Uh, bringing a, 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 a more slim and simple way to integrate with an infrastructure that, that is catering for the entire Nordic area mm. will, of course, lower the entry barriers from some of our more European or, or even international uh, competitors. Uh, so I think this is a, this is a, a, a major uh, change in, 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 in our own uh, way of dealing with the uh, with competition, stay uh, on, on, on top, ensuring that we have uh, some uh, value propositions that, uh, that our customers really understand and, 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 uh, and will receive. Uh, because uh, there are, there are uh, again, many things that we are now opening up for, um, which historically uh, has been sitting in the hands of uh, the Nordic banks. Uh, and one of the the very obvious reasons is because, um, as I said earlier on, that um, if you are uh, an international bank that wants to do core business in, in the Nordic area, uh, if you want to be uh, a clearing partner yourself, there is really a significant investment you need to, uh, to do, not only to run and maintain uh, your operation, uh, but you need to do it in four different countries as it is today. Uh, and again, that will be harmonized also with with the new schemes. Peter, you were talking uh, about uh, the new schemes, the new rules. I mean, NPC 
uh, is definitely also a game changer uh, that we could talk a bit about. Um, so so I, I, I completely agree with you, Peter. And in addition, being a, a Nordic banks, um, getting the, the understanding of ISO 2022 and the interoperability cases, um, not only being a tier one bank, it's also for, for the, the other smaller banks to understand that payments can be created and, and you know offered uh, into the European markets more flexible as well. It, 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 it is complex to, uh, to get into that level because many of them are indirect today, but with the harmonization and, and the ISO uh, orientation, I think it's also a step for, for some of the banks to, to leverage what they're investing in right now and, and the reach into Europe or maybe you know, even the US, etc. How does P27 actually interact with international standards like ISO 2022 um, or other international payment developments? You know, is it is it able to you know uh, just c connect uh, automatically like that, or is there having to be some extra work that's built into that? So the greatness with the Nordic Payment Council is that we we put four different countries uh, having different rule books in all, all those four countries into one. That is that is massive, right? But it's also uh, mirroring the European Payments Council as well. So it's not it's not different. Uh, we're using a different account structures. We have some additional fields and attributes in in the Nordics, uh, but the rest is you know ninety nine percent European based. So taking it a step into European reach is not that big. And we see the same trends all over the world that ISO becoming more dominant and more harmonized in that sense. Uh, to, uh, to facilitate that we can uh, manage to, to do the payments across, across borders. Yeah. But then again, coming back to, to what it takes, because it, it, is, it is a step for, for any given bank to, to ac access those markets. And, and I think the standard ways of, of doing it has been to build it in-house and, and learn from those lessons. Five years ago, going back in time, we, we noticed that the interest of commoditization of payments, meaning that you are outsourcing the payments infrastructure, is one, one way of reducing the risk or, or leveraging the, the experience you have from, from others uh, out there. And, and that has become our, our main focus, specifically for the Nordics, but also for the Euro, um, European side of it, though to, to lower the threshold and, and simplify for banks to take that step. Yeah. Now, with that in mind, then, for the banks that are, are looking at, at uh, adapting, what, what are the, the opportunities that present them immediately for, for kind of um, looking in, into P27 um, payments platform? I think, yeah, I, I think um, the most value for, for participants of P27 going forward will be that by harmonizing and ensuring that we have one infrastructure uh, with the same uh, methodology. When we are then to create new products on top, so when we are to commercialize on, uh, commercialize on top of an infrastructure, we will only need to uh, think Nordic. So we will build products that are Nordic now. Uh, that is a, a complete different way compared to how we have built products for the last 25 years, because all of them, or almost all of them, uh, are uh, products that relates to each and every uh, country. So that will, be, uh, that will definitely be a game changer uh, when you are now to do product development uh, in, in the Nordic area on top of P27. You will most probably build um, Nordic products. Uh, so that is definitely a, a game changer. Another thing is, of course, also that uh, by simplifying uh, and modernizing uh, the way of um, being a member of P27 and the new infrastructure, uh, that will definitely also ease uh, and take costs down, the operational costs down, uh, if you are uh, to be um, one of the the now I say banks, it could it it could of course be others than than, than banks, but uh, if you are. Um, interested in uh, in being uh, on uh, the infrastructure of P27, uh, then uh, the uh, the easy access uh, is is of course uh, again a major uh, game changer for for the the competitive landscape out there. 
Incredible. And now we've we've discussed how it's interacting with uh, global standards, European standards, it's streamlining uh, a, a lot of payments for uh, for a lot of um, institutions, and as as you mentioned, just there, Casper as well, a lot of organisations as well. But Peter, what are the the challenges that that come when when um, implementing um, P twenty seven? What what have you seen? I think it's a uh... It's a great initiative to, uh, as, as I started off, to uh, to find the um, infrastructure to, to renovate your infrastructure to be more than flexible enough to consume these new standards like ISO 2022. Once that is done, uh, then you have a bigger tool to to define your own products, to to look into your own bank, uh, what the services are for now and how they can be tailored for. For a bigger audience or, or new market uh, shares, etc. Yeah. Uh, but the challenge is there. It's very complex. It's a uh, it's a huge investment because it's not only uh, the payments itself. It's to interact with all the surrounding systems, the core banking, the fraud solution, etc. So taking on uh, P twenty seven is massive in, in especially if you're not a tier one bank. Um, yeah. But having said that. Uh, if a bank chooses to uh, adopt the challenge and, and you know, become a, um, best practice of P27, there's a huge beneficial case as well to, to be part of the journey where, where we're moving into initially with batch payments, but when it comes to immediate payments, uh, it will be offering some um, instant account-to-account uh, -account transfers, meaning that uh, you can offer a service uh, if you're late on a payment, uh, you can make that immediate. Um, and also, uh, on top of that, and I think uh, uh, for for Casper, it's also meaning that corporates have a huge interest. There's a growing interest in, in what they can do. And I think that is a huge case for, for any given bank to offer uh, services around reconciliation. So they you get richer information in, in the payments and using that reconciliation you can also do the forecasting much better because you get payment advices or status updates uh, once i select to i have a, to pay the payments as a payer I, 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 the bank can update the, the corporate saying that peter larson has accepted the payment they will pay on uh, saturday or, or or early monday and that is good for forecasting and i think also on liquidity side uh, being a corporate or a merchant, you have a better view on, on, on those sides uh, where you can uh, make the most use of your liquidity going forward. So it's, uh, you know, the sky is the limit here. Well, that's exactly what I want to touch on next, because it really does seem to be, um, you know, Casper, you mentioned, obviously, you know, hamstrung by legacy systems a long time ago, but this is a way to kind of uh, future proof, isn't it, going forward? So with payments innovation, ever evolving at this point now, I think it's fair to say, um, what are the future opportunities or value um, that, that this new payments platform can or will bring um, the bank's business customers in the future? I mean, Peter was bringing up some brilliant ones about you know, enhancing the liquidity, forecasting. I mean, do, do you see sim similar kind of opportunities to present themselves in the future? Exactly. Um, no, I, I, I completely agree. Uh, looking at it from a, from, from a liquidity point of view, liquidity forecast also, I mean, reconciliation will be easier. Uh, it will be easier to understand your day-to-day -day flow. Um, uh, I think Peter gave many good examples here. Uh, but, but another thing is actually that um, we are already, uh, even before P27 is now alive, I mean, there is uh, there's definitely many things, many uh, uh, innovation things that are going on uh, in the market already. Uh, we we're we're supposed to talk a bit about bill payments also, uh, build on the back of a request to to pay. Uh, but again, uh, there are many many uh, big opportunities uh, for 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 us as a Nordic uh, bank to uh, to again uh, improve our product offering and, and to commercialize on, on, on top of the infrastructure. Um, I think it is uh, extremely valuable for us as a bank to, first of all, understand whether we are a big creditor bank uh, uh, or uh, if we, uh, again, would like to uh, increase and improve our consumer flow. That is, again, some of the drivers behind uh, the product uh, innovation. 
we know that we have already seen uh, pay.uk uh, being early uh, adopters to a request to pay. So uh, again, to the to, to the to the earlier question about uh, is there actually examples anywhere else in the world uh, that we can uh, that we can uh, take into uh, account or take into consideration when we are looking at where we want to where we want to go with P27? I think that is that is uh, again uh, a massive game changer. Again, uh, some of the difficulties we, we, we see with, with P27 is, of course, also that everybody needs to remind themselves and understand that we are uh, a complete uh, Nordic industry that needs now to um, agree uh, and negotiate on new terms for some of the Nordic uh, products, where we uh, see some of the products as sector products and some of uh, the products will of course uh, be owned and developed by each and every uh, bank or any uh, other competitor uh, out there um, so so bill payments will be uh, one of the first uh, commercial products that will be built on top of p27 but i'm completely convinced that uh, that all banks are already now uh, looking at their opportunities to ensure that they uh, can uh, enhance or or add to the uh, already existing uh, value propositions that they have uh, with with uh, with their customers amazing well guys i think it's absolutely brilliant because it just seems to be such a, a huge change that we're he hearing we're hearing opportunities not just for the the end user of the banks we're also hearing opportunities for the banks themselves um, and also um, a green slate, a, a new start effectively to kind of look at the new payments innovations from around the world, integrate them and, and look, look ahead. Um, so I just want to say a massive thank you um, to, to both of you for, for your insights. As someone based firmly in the UK, it's very refreshing to hear some of the innovations that are, that are happening with our neighbours and, and it, it makes me very excited for the payments industry as a whole. And I've also got to say a massive thank you to our audience as well. You can catch the rest of the series and much more over at ffnews.com, of course, YouTube, but especially LinkedIn, where you'll see me in the comments. So i got to say, Peter, Casper, thank you so much. I hope you've had a good time and I'll see you again soon. Indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Casper.